This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Pretty fun weekend on tap in the sports world. In addition to the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs, you've also got uh, one of the final match weeks of the season for the English Premier League, and you've got NASCAR throwback weekend in Darlington. We're going to talk to Austin Cass about the EPL side of things, get his favorite bets of FanDuel Sportsbook from Match Week 37. Then I'll dive into all three series for the NASCAR uh, for NASCAR and Darlington and let you know my favorite bets for each of those this weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here to start things off by Austin Cass. Check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. He is a senior editor for FanDuel Research. Austin, happy Friday to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jim. Happy Friday to you. I'd hesitate there because we had Austin Swaim on last week and Friday is not his Friday. It's his Monday. And so I like had to think like, no, you work Monday to Friday. And it like, it tripped me up. I t- told him like, I always screw up your, like when I'm typing out your names, I type out Austin every time I add the A and the I it's we're all in a tizzy here, but luckily it's just you for today. So that makes things a bit easier on me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I've been struggling with the spelling of my name my whole life. So <laughs> one thing I'm used to. Yeah. Really? Not me personally, but teachers and oh, you know, okay, okay. I was like, because like no. I mess up, like I'll capitalize like the wrong letter in my name. Like I capitalize the I in Jim like every time. Also, if I type out the word fewer, I always capitalize the E accidentally in addition to really? the F because like I don't like my muscles aren't fast enough to like do it anyway. <laughs> this is but like it's very tough for me. And like when I'm writing out like notes for baseball, it's a lot of times. Fewer forcing fastballs or fewer sliders. So the word fewer comes up a lot. And every single time there is a capital E that just creeps in there. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few things that I just can't type in. Career is one for me for some reason. Interesting. I type two R's. I, I don't know. But I've got a few things like that. I should make a list whenever I whenever it happens. But yeah. There are two fewers with capital E's in my MLB notes for today. So good thing those are not public because they're just for me. Uh, only I can know my personal shame except for everyone listening to this show now. We'll talk to Austin about the EPL Match Week 37. Big match this week as Arsenal is taking on Manchester United. We'll talk about that match and other spots where Austin sees value. Then I'll dive into NASCAR and Darlington all today. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Huge week for for the show next week we have got the preakness stakes we'll talk to uh, an expert from FanDuel TV about that coming up on Thursday we're gonna talk about PGA Championship with Brandon Gadula on Tuesday second major of the year gonna be a fun week NFL schedule release too we'll talk about that next Friday so all all that good stuff coming on the covering the spread podcast feed next week make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast and if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating and review as well the NBA playoffs are tipped off but it's not too late to get in on the action with FanDuel because right now new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's $150 to use on same game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering all online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 188 789 slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-800-gambler.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call under 327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call one 877 hope and y or text hope and y in New York. 
Now, Austin, let's begin things with an Arsenal versus Manchester United match. Arsenal still is an outside shot at the title, uh, about plus 210. Their title odds right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Really tough task on Sunday taking on Manchester United. Any value for you in this game with Arsenal's money line at minus 270? I don't love the money line, but I have another bet that's a little bit weird that I do like for this game, and it's uh, the first half under one and a half goals, which you can find in the half tab there. Um, By pretty much any metric you will look at, Arsenal are the much better side here. Um, But I think there's a chance Manchester United make this game more interesting than people think, at least for a little while. I'm not sure they can hold up over the full 90 minutes. But I think they'll come out of the gates with a lot of energy. On uh, this past Monday, they got embarrassed 4 0 at Crystal Palace. It was really just a brutal performance all the way around. And I think that loss, coupled with this match Sunday being a headline match and at home, I think that's going to lead the United starting the game pretty well and keeping things competitive early. If that happens, even if that happens, I think United are going to have a really tough time creating chances against Arsenal's defense. Arsenal's allowed just 14.0 expected goals through 18 away matches, which is incredible. But that's kind of how I get to the under one and a half goals for the first half. I think United are going to be able to put up a fight and make a fist of it here for a little bit. And that's probably going to result in a 0-0 or 1-0 scoreline in the first half. That's what I'm hoping. So kind of like this under one and a half goals at minus 128. As you mentioned, minus 128 for the under one and a half goals in the first half for Arsenal versus Man United. Obviously, Arsenal, a lot to play for here. Man United has fallen out of the championship picture, but still sitting there in third. Is it is it avoiding the or bouncing back from the embarrassment, I guess, is the way to phrase that from earlier in the week? Is that their main motivation here, or is there other motivation to make sure they keep pushing in this match? Um, I think that that's the main motivation is how Monday's game played out. They yeah. really don't have much to play for. Okay. They're actually, I think you're getting them confused maybe with Liverpool. United yes. are in like eighth. Yeah. Liverpool is the team that's just fallen out of it. So yeah, United really don't have much to play for. Their manager's under a lot of fire and might be out of a job this summer. So they, they've got that. But I think they have some talent and this is going to be a headline match. It's the only match on Sunday, I'm pretty sure. So everyone's going to be watching it. And they have a chance to basically ruin Arsenal's season here, (laughs) even if just a tie. So United has shown at various times this year that they can play pretty well against good teams, especially against Liverpool. They've done pretty well against Liverpool. So, yeah, I think just the extra motivation after how their Monday match went and this being a headline game, being at home, the crowd's energy, I think they're going to come out pretty well. And this is going to be a tougher game than people think for Arsenal. Okay, so they got to come out well, but don't come out too well because we don't want them to to build a 2-0 lead here. But we'll take uh, Manchester United and Arsenal under one and a half goals in the first half. That is minus 128 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Nine other matches from Saturday through Monday, Austin. Where else are you seeing value in the traditional markets at FanDuel for this week? In Saturday's Crystal Palace Wolves match, I really like the under two and a half goals for the full match. Um I think the goals are going to be really hard to come by for each team. Palace has been a great under bet this year. They've been surprisingly stout defensively. They've conceded the fourth fewest expected goals in the league for the season. But on the other end, they've had a ton of trouble creating chances. They've created the fourth fewest expected goals. So uh, they've just been great for low scoring games all the way around. Now they're a lot better with Michael Olise and Evriche Eze, two players we've talked about before. When they're healthy in the team, they're a much better side going forward, and they are healthy right now. But Palace overall have still really struggled on the road. They've scored only 17 times in 18 away matches, and the under two and a half goals has hit in each of Palace's last four road matches. Wolves, uh, on the other hand, they've also been terrible at home, especially in attack. They've created just 21.7 expected goals in 18 home matches this season. So that aids the Enders outlook as well. These late season matchups between teams who don't really have anything to play for, they're not competing to to have a place in a European competition next season, and they're not going to get relegated. They can be a little bit volatile. Teams will sometimes play younger players in these situations. The level of motivation for players, even like Olise and Eze, who we mentioned, probably are going to be moving to bigger clubs this summer, I would guess. At least one of them will. So that makes these matches kind of volatile and tricky. But overall, I think this is going to be 
uh, one where the defenses went out over the attacks, and I like under two and a half goals. Under two and a half is plus 103 at FanDuel Sportsbook for Wolves versus Crystal Palace. We talked about Crystal Palace being in like the relegation zone at one point this year, but since they've gotten hot, is that just health? Those two guys getting back or what has kind of catalyzed this surge for them? I would say two big reasons. Those two guys being healthy for sure, especially Olise. He's really an, a spectacular player and will be uh, one of the European powers here pretty soon. And then they actually sacked their manager <laughs> and they got – uh, kind of a new manager bounce a little bit. It, it took a couple games, but they've really been playing a lot better lately. And the, as I had mentioned when I was talking about United, they just beat Man United 4-0 on Monday. So they have some talent and they've been just somehow, I'm not really sure how they're doing it because on paper their defense isn't great, but they've been pretty excellent defensively all season. So uh, yeah, they I think without Eze and Olise, they probably would be in a relegation fight, yeah. but with those two guys, they're pretty solidly mid table. Well, let's hope that surging defense carries through to this match as well. Under two and a half goals, plus one and three for a Wolves versus Crystal Palace. I don't know player props. What are you seeing there this week, Austin? I'm going to stick with Saturday, uh, Luton town at West Ham. Um, it's a 10 o'clock Saturday match. Uh, and I like Muhammad Kudus to score or assist. So I'm going back here, been a little cold on this market lately. So I'm due. <laughs> Uh, West Ham, they're West Ham are really sputtering toward the finish line. Um, they've they're going to be parting ways with their manager at the end of this season. They don't really have anything to play for, and it seems like they just are kind of ready for the finish line to get here. They just lost 5 0 at Chelsea last weekend, but they have a really great matchup here. I like them to score multiple goals. Uh, the betting market agrees West Ham are minus 188 to go over one and a half goals. And like I said, a lot of it comes down to the matchup. Luton Town have been decent at home, but they've been dreadful in, on the road. In 18 away games, they've conceded 45 goals and 43.7 expected goals. I think Kudus will be at the heart of it for West Ham. He has seven goals and five assists this season. He's been a really solid player for them this year, and he should have the opportunity. He's played at least 85 minutes in 15 straight Premier League matches, and uh, he's played all 90 in 14 of those. So the opportunity should be there, and I think plus 105 is more than fair in a match where they should create several chances. West Ham right now ninth in the table. Any risk of Kudu sitting out of this match, given that it's not a super important one? Like, should we hold off on betting this, or how are you viewing that market? There's there's definitely some risk for sure. Um, okay. I think I believe this is their last home match of the year, so maybe okay. they'll want to kind of go out on a high note, especially after losing 5-0 last weekend. But uh, I would wait until nine to, to set this just because those mid-table teams can do some funky stuff with their lineup late in the year. Okay, so hold off until lineups are out for West Ham versus Luton. And if Mohamed Kudus is in there, Austin likes him to score or assist. That is plus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all we got for Austin for today. Find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cast. Check out his work over at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin, I appreciate the time. As always, enjoy the soccer this weekend. We'll talk to you once again in the very near future. Sounds good. Thank you, Tim. Alrighty, again, find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass and check out all of his great work over at FanDuel Research as well. Before we finish up for today, we got to talk some NASCAR because all three of NASCAR's top series are in Darlington for this weekend. It is throwback weekend where all these cars are running like retro paint schemes. It feels very old to have rooted for the driver who has his paint schemes in the field at times. So we're officially aged. I've got the throwback bobbleheads uh, in the background, too, to celebrate. A couple of Elliott Sadler bobbleheads from 2003, 2004. So we're leaning into throwback weekend for NASCAR. Let's start things off in the Cup Series side of things. Not seeing a lot of value in the outright market. I do like Christopher Bell, if you can get him 14 to 1, but he's currently 10 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So would want that to lengthen. I don't think we'll see that occur before we have practice and qualifying uh, take place on a Saturday. So instead... I want to buy in to the other markets and specifically two drivers grayed out as being values for me this week with this weekend. The big one we'll start with is Michael McDowell. And I want to do a ladder bet with McDowell for him to finish top five at 16 to one and to finish top 10 at plus 450. So a ladder bet is where you take your typical bet size and divide it. So let's say you are a $10 better. Uh, you put seven bucks on the $10 
market and then three in the top top five. That way you allow yourself upside should McDowell get in the top five, but you profit if he winds up in the top 10 as well. Big news this week for McDowell is he is moving to uh, Spire next year from Front Row Motorsports probably getting a raise. Spire has been throwing around a lot of money recently. So I'm guessing that's part of why McDowell is heading elsewhere. And he's earned that because he's run well the past couple of years for front row. And that includes good runs in Darlington where they're at this weekend. He was top 10 here in both 2022 races and front row has shown improved speed this year. McDowell specifically has a pair of poles. He has started inside the top 10 seven separate times. So he has better speed and he runs well on tracks that feature lots of tire fall off, which is the key characteristic of Darlington. So I don't think that McDowell should be this long. I have made 0.9% to finish top five. His implied odds 16 to one are 5.9%. As for the top 10, if you want to go just the safer route, he's plus 450 to finish inside the top 10. The implied odds at uh, plus 450 are down at 18.2%. I have McDowell 25.4% to finish inside the top 10. So I love both those bets. Again, I want to ladder it where you take your typical bet size and divide it so as to not overexpose yourself to a single driver. Put the largest chunk of it on the top 10, the rest in the top five to give yourself upside should McDowell get a top five here this weekend. I will say I also did bet McDowell outright this week. Uh, I got him at 250. He's, I think, 120 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So I wouldn't do it at 120. But if he were to lengthen somehow before practice and qualifying, I think that'd be okay to consider. So uh, Michael McDowell, my favorite driver to bet on for this week in Darlington. The other driver where I'm showing value to finish top 10 is actually Corey LaJoy, who will be McDowell's team in next year at Spire. So LaJoy is 12 to 1 and not a huge value here by any means, uh, but there's enough for me to bet it. Uh, it's a 10.3% implied for LaJoy to finish inside the top 10. I have or 7.7% uh, 7 .7 implied and I have McDowell or LaJoy at 10.3%. He had a great run at Darlington back in 2021. That was before they made this shift to the next gen car. So his lesser equipment at that time was a bigger downside and still ran well. And now in more equal equipment, Spire has been a lot faster so far this year. Now, Mc LaJoy was not good at Darlington last year. So I want to keep that in mind. But again, better speed this year. He was legit contending for a top seven finish in, in Las Vegas. You can have attrition at this track. So I think we can justify LaJoy 12 to 1 to finish inside the top 10 for this week. I prefer the McDowell Becks. I show more value there, but do like LaJoy as well. So Corey LaJoy top 10, uh, 12 to 1. And then Michael McDowell top 10 at plus 450 and uh, top 5 at 16 to 1. My favorite Cup Series bets for this week. As mentioned, though, we do have both the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series in Darlington this weekend. Xfinity Series win sims already up at FanDuel Research. So let's dive into the one driver I'm willing to bet on for this week, and that's Riley Herbst at 20 to 1. Willing to bet to win, I should say. Herbst is at 20 to 1, and want to keep the outright card pretty limited this week because it's a very tough field. William Byron's in the field, Eric Almarola, John Hunter Nemechek, and they're all really good drivers. But Herbst is long enough to be a value despite the tough field. He's at 6.2% for me versus 4.8% implied. And Herbst has been good at Darlington in the past. He's had three top six finishes at this track. He has wrecked a lot too, which is a risk with him because he, he wrecks a lot. But he's in better form right now than he has been entering previous Darlington races. He was runner up in Homestead last year. That's another track with a lot of tire fall off. So he does wreck like this, and that's not fun at a track where you can have a lot of own error, own goals, I guess we could say. Um, that's a little bit concerning, but I think we're getting long enough odds to still feel good about that with Herbst here. 20 to 1 is Herbst's number at FanDuel Sportsbook. Do you want to at least mention that I value in Parker Retzloff 300 to 1? I got him around, I think, like 1% actually, which might be kind of high, but just throwing that out there. Uh, not recommend recommending that. This is a do as I say, not as I do situation because I did bet him to win. Uh, but just throwing it out there. Parker Retz off 3 to 1, also a value, not a recommendation, but just putting it out there that I do show value in him as well. As for the truck series, that race is tonight. Uh, that's pretty fun, but 
Not fun is that they're facing Kyle Bush. And if you want to cash an outright at FanDuel Sportsbook, you got to be Kyle Bush. And that doesn't happen super often. Bush has run four races so far this year. He has won twice. So he's not invincible, but he's pretty dang close to it. Plus 130 is Bush to win on Friday, Friday night at FanDuel Sportsbook. Not seeing a ton of outright value. And the one guy I like most is not a massive value for me. But I like Tyler Ankrum at 28 to 1 to win tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook. The implied odds of 28 to 1 are 3.4%. I have Ankrum at 3.9%, so not well above market. But the reason I'm still willing to buy in here is that I thought I was being pretty conservative with Ankrum in my like in my model and keeping him a bit lower than what I could have put him at. And I still showed value. So he's in the best equipment he's had at this track. He's been pretty good at Darlington previously. He was ninth here in 2022, finished 11th in his debut at Darlington back in uh, his age 19 season in 2020. And he was also runner up in Homestead that same year. So Ankrum needs to be Kyle Busch, but he did do that in Las Vegas this year, finished second there. So I think he can get the job done. I also do show value on Stuart Friesen. He is 50 to one and Matt Crafton 55 to one. You could consider them, and like I think Freeson is actually the bigger value. Yeah, I have him at 2.8%. His implied odds are 2%. So Freeson is the bigger value, but I feel better about Ankrum. So we'll go Ankrum 28 to 1 to win the Truck Series race tonight. So betting recommendations for me in NASCAR this weekend Tyler Ankrum 28 to 1 on Friday night in the Truck Series. Riley Herbst at 20 to 1 in Xfinity. Maybe Parker Ratzloff, 300 to 1, Xfinity 2. And then Corey LaJoy, top 10 at 12 to 1. Michael McDowell, top 10, 450, and a top 5 at 16 to 1. That is all that we have here for today and this week here on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Austin Cass for swinging by, breaking down his thoughts in EPL Match Week 37. Find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets tonight and this weekend. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 